I think back on my 10-year term at the Urban League, the state of black America is one of the things that I'm most proud of. The 1970s was the aftermath of what happened in the 1960s when we conferred and defined the rights of black people. The 1970s were about making real the rights that had been defined. Let me give you an example. In the 1960s, we conferred and defined the right to check in the motel or the hotel. The 1970s were about providing the wherewithal to check out. You know, the right to check in is meaningless if you don't have what it takes to check out. And so that meant a good education so you can get a good job. And so the implementation of the definition and the conferring of rights in the 1960s was a primary goal of the 1970s. 1975 was an interesting year. Uh, President Gerald Ford was running the country. Uh, he was a good man. He was a friend of mine. Uh, but in the area that I most cared about, he was not very aggressive, and um, uh, we weren't getting much leadership on the issue that the Urban League was interested in, that is uh, the equal opportunity for black Americans. And I was still relatively new, having succeeded with Neon, and we had lost Martin in the late 60s, and then we lost Whitney Young, and then uh, the NACP and Roy Wilkins was not feeling so well or doing so well. And so I was sort of the youngest uh, guy, new guy on the scene, and it was important to fill this gap and um, uh, I thought that was my job and I thought institutionally it was what the Urban League ought to be doing. And one of the programs that we initiated was the State of Black America. And it's interesting that in the State of the Union addressed by President Ford, he didn't say anything about equal opportunity or the plight of black people. We came out the same month with the state of black America and we, uh, it was sufficiently potent, it was sufficiently well researched that the New York Times wrote an editorial about it and essentially said that we had done the nation and the political parties a service by issuing the State of Black America, which is now 40 years old. That's a, that's a good thing for the National Urban League and for the country. It was crucial and it was the truth. It was factual, it was well-researched. And um, that's part of the, the Urban League uh, charge to enlighten, to educate, uh, to help people understand the, the plight that black people in America were facing uh, at that particular time. It, it served that purpose, but it also served another purpose in that local urban leagues start issuing the state of black America in their local city, the state of of black people in XYZ city. And that got duplicated. And so the, the presentation of good research, facts and figures, uh, turned out to be a very positive aspect of the Urban League advocacy for equal opportunity. What I'm proud of is my successes uh, who, in my judgment, had the good judgment to continue it.
because it was not only in the interest of the the National Urban League and its programs, it was in my judgment in the interest of the nation because politicians, ministers, professors, academics, uh, they use this data to make their points in their lectures and in their speeches. And it was good data. I remember election night in 2008 when they announced that Obama was going to be the next president of the United States and I, I found myself sitting there watching the television with tears just streaming down my eyes and it dawned on me that that my tears were not really my tears, but they were the tears of my grandparents and my parents. They were the tears of all those black people who toted that cotton and lifted that bale. The notion that Obama is gonna be president or any black person would be president is stunning. I feel good and gratified about the continuance of a program that I was privileged to start is in its 40th year. And that tells you something about the substance of the Urban League, about the consistency of its leadership. Uh, and so I'm very pleased about it.